Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more labs like this. In this lab, we will configure the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, EIGRP. EIGRP is, as the name suggests, an enhanced version of Cisco's Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, IGRP. Although EIGRP used to be a Cisco proprietary routing protocol, meaning it was available only on Cisco routers, it has been moved to an open standard. However, in a multi-vendor environment, you're almost certainly going to see OSPF used over EIGRP. Let's get started. The first step is to configure a loopback address on each router. These addresses will later become the EIGRP router IDs used for each router. The EIGRP router ID functions the same way as the OSPF router ID. Manual configuration takes priority. If the router ID is not manually configured, the highest IP address on a loopback interface is used. If there is no loopback interface, the highest IP address on a regular interface is used. We've configured loopbacks plenty of times, so let's go through this quickly. I'll start on R1. Enable, conf t, interface L0, IP address 1.1.1.1, 255.255.255.255. Okay, next, R2. Enable, conf t, interface L0, IP address 2.2.2.2, 255.255.255.255. Okay, next, R3. Enable, conf t, interface L0. IP address 3.3.3.3, 255.255.255.255. Next is R4. Enable, conf t, Interface L0, IP address 4.4.4.4, 255.255.255.255. Okay, finally, let's go on R5. Enable, conf t, interface L0, IP address 5.5.5.5, 255.255.255.255. Okay, that's all for step one. Now let's actually configure EIGRP on each router. The configuration is similar to OSPF configuration. Let's go back to R1. To enter EIGRP configuration mode, use this command, router EIGRP, followed by the autonomous system or AS number. In this case, we'll use 100. While in OSPF, the process ID used in the router OSPF command was only locally significant and could be different on each router in the network, the EIGRP AS number has to be the same on each router in the network. If the AS number is different, routers will not become EIGRP neighbors. Keep that in mind and definitely look out for AS mismatches in any troubleshooting problems on the test. Okay, so from here we use the network command, just like OSPF. However, EIGRP doesn't have the concept of areas, so we just need the IP address and network mask. Now, the EIGRP network command works the same as the OSPF network command in that it doesn't actually specify the networks you are going to advertise. It is used only to identify which interfaces to activate EIGRP on, and then those interfaces will advertise their configured networks. Another feature of the EIGRP network command is that it defaults to classful network boundaries if you don't enter a mask. So for example, R1's G00 and F10 interfaces both fall within the class A 10.0.0.0 slash 8 range. So I'll just type network 10.0.0.0 and now EIGRP will be activated on both interfaces. Next, I'll just enable it on the loopback. Network 1.1.1.1, and this time let's enter the exact wildcard mask, 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. 
Now let's make the loopback passive. Since we don't want to waste resources sending advertisements on an interface that isn't connected to any other router. This is exactly the same as an OSPF. Passive interface L0. Finally, we should disable auto summary. Auto summary can be on or off by default, I assume depending on either the OS version or router model. In Packet Tracer and on these routers, however, it is enabled by default. You should always turn it off. Any summarization should be done manually and only where intended. No auto summary. That's it. Okay, let's continue on to R2. I'll go through these steps quickly for the other routers. Router EAGRP 100. Again, make sure the AS number is consistent throughout the network. Network 10.0.0.0. Network 2.2.2.2. .2 .2 .2 .2. O dot O dot O dot O. Passive interface, L0. No auto summary. Okay, next let's go on R3. Router EAGRP 100. Network 10.0.0.0. Network 3.3.3.3. O dot O dot O dot O. Passive interface, L0. No auto summary. Next, R4. Router EAGRP 100. Network 10.0.0.0. Network 4.4.4.4.0.0.0.0. Passive interface L0. No auto summary. Okay, finally, let's go to R5. Router EAGRP 100. Network 10.0.0.0. Network 5.5.5.5, O.0.0.0. Passive interface L0, no auto summary. Okay, that's all. Let's go on R1 and see what routes it has learned. Do show IP route. The D beside these routes indicates that they were learned via EIGRP. Notice the administrative distance of 90, as opposed to OSPF's 110. This means if two routes are learned to a destination, one via EIGRP and one via OSPF, the EIGRP route will be preferred. Also, notice these huge metric numbers. OSPF metric numbers were quite small and simple to understand. However, EIGRP's metric numbers can get quite large. This is a small network, and R1's path to R5 has a metric of 156,672. This is the path via R4 because it has one gigabit Ethernet link, while the route via R2 is all fast Ethernet. However, our next task is to configure R1 to perform unequal cost load balancing when sending traffic to R5. OSPF can only do equal cost load balancing, but EIGRP can do unequal cost load balancing. However, it can't be configured to do unequal cost load balancing over just any path. It has to meet a certain requirement. Let's look further. Do show IP EIGRP topology. This command shows the successor routes, meaning the best routes to each destination, as well as the feasible successor routes, meaning routes that weren't picked as the successor, but meet that certain requirement, and will also serve as backups in the case the successor route goes down. If you don't understand the EIGRP concepts of successor and feasible successor, as well as feasible distance and reported or advertised distance, make sure you learn them in whatever video course or book you are using. They can be a little difficult to understand at first, and I'm not going to explain them here. So, in this EIGRP topology table, these numbers on the left indicate the feasible distance to a destination, and the numbers on the right indicate the reported distance. Remember, in order for a route to be a feasible successor, its reported distance must be lower than the successor's feasible distance. Routes which don't meet this criteria will not show up in this table. However, do show IP EIGRP topology 
all links will display them. In this network, however, there aren't any such routes. Okay, so R1 has a successor route to R5 via 10.14.0.4, which is R4, with a metric of 156,672. It also has a feasible successor route via 10.12.0.2, which is R2, with a metric of 158,976. To enable R1 to load balance over these, uh, use the variance command. Then we enter a multiplier. For example, variance 2 will allow R1 to load balance over feasible successor routes that have up to double the feasible distance of the successor route, or triple the distance if we used variance 3. The difference between these two metrics is fairly small, so in this case we can just use variance 2. That's it. Do show IP route. Now you can see both paths are in the routing table, both for the 5.5.5.5 loopback address and the 10.35.0.0 network. Let me just emphasize one point. EIGRP will never load balance over paths which aren't feasible successors. You can set the maximum variance, 128, but if the other paths aren't feasible successors, EIGRP won't load balance over them. This is an important feature to prevent routing loops. Okay, our last task is to configure R3 to advertise a 10.0.0.0 slash 8 summary network to R5. Manual summarization is actually not in the exam topics for ICND2. However, I included it in my OSPF labs and will here in my EIGRP labs simply for the reason that it is often included in other CCNA learning materials. Cisco's exam topics don't necessarily list everything that is on the exam, so summarization may actually be something you should know for the exam. And in either case, it's just a single command, so let's try it out on R3. To configure a summary route in EIGRP, we configure it at the interface level. Unlike in OSPF, where we configure that OSPF configuration mode. In this case, we'll configure it on the G00 interface, the one facing R5. Interface G00. This is the command. IP summary address EIGRP, followed by the AS number 100, then the network address 10.0.0.0, followed by the mask. Much like with OSPF summarization, EIGRP summarization uses a normal network mask, not a wildcard mask, unlike the network command, which does use a wildcard mask. So in this case, 255.0.0.0. Okay, that's all there is to it. Let's check it out on R5. Do show IP route. There it is. R5 has now learned a 10.0.0.0 slash 8 summary address instead of all of those separate networks. In this lab, we did a basic EIGRP configuration with unequal cost load balancing and some manual summarization. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. I am also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or Basic Attention Token donations in the Brave browser.